Oh, it's that I can't get the new price because it's only available every third Tuesday after the first full moon of a season. I guess that's not too bad. Oh, and it's only available for new customers. No, okay, thanks for your time. Don't you guys hate it when you can't get the price of the thing that was advertised because there's these weird hidden terms and conditions? It really pisses me off. Anyway, here's how I made a deck builder in 10 lines of code. Alright, so the title might be a little bit hyperbolic, but... Okay, I got nothing. And you're not me or my parents when I was 15, so I'll stop lying to you. I did add a deck builder to my ARPG meets turn-based kind of, I don't know, conglomeration keyword jumble of a game that I'm making. And if you want full context, check out the first episode of this devlog. And the deck management part of this new system is 10 lines of code, but there was a little more that went into it, so let's talk about it. So how do we make a deck building system and add it to our game? Well... If I knew the answer to that question, I wouldn't have spent so long making one that I felt the need to justify the time spent by making a video about it for you guys. But if there's one thing I've learned from constantly biting off more than I can chew, is that a lot of times if you break a project down into smaller projects, eventually you'll find one that you kind of know how to do. So I ended up splitting this project into three smaller projects. The first one that I came up with was to build a system to handle the actual card data. The descriptions, the names, the damage numbers, all of that stuff. The next project was to figure out how the hell Godot's UI system actually works. Not that it's overly complicated, I'm just overly dense, and I knew that one was going to be a problem. And the last project was to make a system to actually handle that card data, let you add cards to your deck, use those in combat, all of that good stuff, and that's where the magical 10 lines of code happens. Oh, also, at the end of this video, I did something completely unrelated to deck building that I think some of you will appreciate. And if you want to return the favor and do something completely unrelated that I would appreciate, why not hit that subscribe button? Okay, let's talk about JSON data. So before we get into the 10 magical lines of code to manage the cards, we need some cards to actually manage. Now this may all change later, but for now, the way that I decided to do this is to store all of the data I need in JSON files, and then take that JSON data and load it into some type of class within the code. So as I worked through this, I ended up coming up with two files. One that's just a dictionary list of all possible cards in the game with their basic metadata, names, descriptions, base numbers, etc. I then made a second file that just stores the player's cards. This is essentially just a list of IDs referring back to the main dictionary, but it does include some other variable data like card power, as that may change from card to card. I then spent absolutely way too long figuring out how to load those JSON files into a C-sharp class, which I auto-loaded through Godot and then got access to this card data, the dictionary, and the player's cards pretty much everywhere in my code. So I thought that was pretty cool, until I realized that I probably would have to save this data, and based on how difficult it was for me to load that data, well, saving it also may be a problem, but based on my track record of not actually finishing projects that I start, that might not even be a concern I have to deal with. So I did what I do with most of my responsibilities and decided to worry about it later. Future me is going to absolutely love this. Anyway, before moving on, I added a simple function that takes basically any ID from the dictionary list and a power value and it then gives that card to the player. So we now have a way to have a list of cards and a simple way to just give the player a card, whether or not they can use it. Doesn't matter right now. But with that done, I had nothing left to procrastinate with, so I had to move on to every artistically challenged programmer's worst nightmare. UI. So you know that meme that's like, I don't know how to do whatever, and at this point, I'm too afraid to ask? I mean, that's basically me with Godot's UI system. I've spent honestly, a fair amount of time in various small games, messing around with Godot UI, and I can confidently say that going into this project, I had really no idea what I was doing. My strategy previously was just add enough containers until it kind of looked right, and then just hope no one asked questions. But for this project, I figured it was a good idea to just sit down, bite the bullet, and beat my head against the proverbial wall constructed of HBox containers, VBox containers, grid containers, and whatever the hell this is. And it actually kind of worked. Now, I wouldn't say I'm a professional or anything. I'm kind of at the point that's like, um, I don't know how best to explain this. Do you guys remember learning CSS back before Flexbox existed and you wanted to center a div vertically and horizontally inside of another div? Then after copy and pasting enough random blocks of CSS from Stack Overflow, you got something that worked and you kind of understood it, but you still had to pray to at least three different deities that it would still work every time you pasted it into your code. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with Godot's UI system. But now that I had a UI built and I made a reference that not only dated me more than I would have liked and is probably way too niche to be relevant, I decided to move on to the final 
final magical 10 lines of code. Okay, so at this point we have cards loaded into their own classes, accessible everywhere in the code. We have a way we can theoretically display them, so what are these 10 magical lines that make it all work? Well, before we go into that, I do want to contextualize how this deck building will work. My idea for it is you will just have your full list of cards available to you. Every card you've collected in this run will sit in your deck library. You can then add cards to your active deck based on your power limit. So how much card power you can actually have in your deck at one time. So theoretically, all of the cards you've picked up, you can slot in as long as you have the points available to do that. So with that said, the first seven lines of code is essentially just removing everything from the screen and then rebuilding the list based on the class data. I decided to use this kind of kill-fill system because I thought it'd be easier when I start to add in sorting or organization to really just play with the actual class data and then just completely remove the list and rebuild it based on that. I thought it'd be easier than trying to replace or move around different objects. So that's the first seven lines of code, really just showing stuff on the screen. And the last three lines is really where all the magic happens. And in these three lines, well, all we really do is toggle a card's active status. It's a Boolean value. We flip it to true or false, depending on what it was previously. And we only let you flip it to true if you have the card points available to do so. That's really all there is. There's there's not a lot to it. This is not a very complex card system. But don't those function calls push it over 10 lines of code? Well, I mean, yeah, but they're basically one-line functions, which I could write all in one line. But I'm pretty sure writing code that horrendous is against the Geneva Convention or something, and I'd probably lose the respect of anyone who's ever coded anything in their life. And full transparency, I did have to add a few other lines of code to add the text for the card name and description to the UI elements. And don't hate me for this, but I also, I added even more lines to make the code readable and ugh, documented. But in the end, we had a system where we could store cards and give cards to the player. We could show the cards in a nice little UI, and we could allow the player to actually choose which cards they want to add to their deck. And I also added a little level system for testing so I can level up and actually add more cards to my deck. And overall, even though we wrote more than 10 lines of code for this video, the core concept of the deck builder, or at least the deck management, was 10 lines of code. And hey, that's good enough for the clickbait. Unless this video just does really poorly, in which case I lied to you for no reason. But to make it up to you, that's where this new special part of the video comes in, where I showcase a new feature that was suggested by you, the viewer. In a new section I like to call, well, not all your ideas are bad, where I take feature suggestions from the comments or from my Discord and, well, I make them. And for this devlog, I added a slight movement animation for both the player and the enemies to show their actions after their turn. To do this, I set up a timer that will be the maximum amount of time that this animation can take. I then took all of the tiles on that player or object specific path and set a tween to move between their current tile and that next tile in a time span that's like the max amount of time divided by the number of steps in their path. So I guess technically if you move farther, you'll look like you're moving faster, but it will all be contained in that like 0.2 second span. So it's kind of cool, looks kind of nice. And honestly, it's a pretty good idea. So if after watching this video, you have an idea that might make the game better, or you have an idea that sounds simple, but is actually going to be a nightmare for me to develop. So you just suggest it. So I think, hey, that's a good idea. I'll work on that. And then I just spiral into this week long development process where I just get completely lost and it ends up taking years off of my life. I mean, you can suggest that too. I mean, go crazy in the comments or on the Discord if you want to join the Discord to stay a little bit more up to date on what I'm working on for this game. Anyway, that's all I got for this video. I got to go do, I don't know, something. But I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.